Ja. Ein Ausnahme ist, ja. You left it here, right? Okay. Where your ring finger touches. That's the beginning. I am all here. Yeah, two seven. Okay, so that. Now, once one, uh, one leg is done, and meanwhile, your other fingers on the bottom are squeezing. Come on top and do the other one. Do the right one. Very good for the body. Stimulated internal organs. And after you're done, hand the feet together, straighten out, just rotate, rotate your ankles. One direction, and then the other direction. And then you're done. How many of you have uh, guessed? How long you have sat? Do you know? 20 minutes. 20 minutes? How long? 30? 35 minutes, close to 40 minutes. And you didn't believe you can sit for that long. You sat for that long. No, it's not, not that painful, a little bit discomfort. You can sit for a long time. You begin in a quarter two. Then now it's 20 after. So that whole set, like I said, let's go back to this page. Right? Before we sit, we do mindful yoga. And that's not even counting the yoga. And then, breathing. Right? Relaxing the body. That took like, we only did one round. So because I'm doing it as a guided meditation, it usually takes longer. But when you're doing it, it's just very systematic. You can do three rounds, a few minutes. And, uh, and then you use the method. And then afterwards, self-massage. So that's a whole package. Right? Every time you do it, you do it this, this way. Now I'm going to ask some questions. We try two methods working with the breath. Meditation on breath. How many of you like um, mindfulness of breath? Just be aware of sensations better. Raise your hand. You can raise your hand more than once. Okay. How many of you like counting better? Raise your hand. Okay. Okay. Whichever one you like, you choose that as the main method and use the other one as a supporting method. In other words, if you use counting, right, you count. You begin with just relaxing the breath. Scan the body section by section, make sure it's relaxed. Be aware of the breath and then go into your main method. So the other one is like a crutch. If you choose um, awareness of breath as your main method, you can use counting as a crutch. For example, the counting breath is very special because anything that's not a number is a wandering thought. It's very clear. Right? So um, if your mind is very scattered, Usually, people can't use the awareness of breath. They don't even know the sensation. It's very hard. They're not used to it, and they're not familiar, and the mind floats here, and then it goes off somewhere. So what you can do is use counting to first concentrate the mind first, clarify the mind. And then, once your mind is concentrated, drop the numbers. Just pay attention to the sensation. You see? So one is a main method. Another one is supporting method. Now let's share some of uh, your experiences. Um, do you have questions from the method? For example, why, why you like one or the other? And, and if you can raise your hand, I can. Or, or hand the mic to you. Which one did you choose? I used the uh, one where you use the nostrils. Nostrils, uh, hot sensation. Cold. Hot cold. Hot and cold. There's all kinds of sensations here. Where the breath passes, the silkiness of the breath, where it feels. 
coolness, warmth. Okay? Anyone else? Yes. What if you are uh, meditating by yourself, you are meditating by yourself, and you feel that you are falling to sleep, and you have no teacher to wake you up? Do you stop meditation at the time or continue? You have to. Uh, I, I will talk about this a little later. Right? But basically, you have to have the awareness right, to check whether your body, once in a while, you check the body is tense or not, like I did, remember? Three places this area this area, and this area. Once in a while, you have to check the status of your mind, the state of your mind. Uh, my teacher uh, gives three words for this. Contemplation. All methods are like contemplation. One, all kinds of contemplation. Right? The contemplation of breath. Illumination is that clarity. So in Chan, we not only focus on concentration, we focus on concentration and clarity at the same time. Remember about the sun, able to shine? You need focus and clarity at the same time. So second one is illumination, means Zhao, Guan Zhao. Zhao means the quality of mind that's able to uh, assess the present state. what you are doing, what you are experiencing at this moment. Whether there's slight sense of lethargic dullness beginning to settle in. If you don't have that, you don't have illumination, the kind of clarity. And the third one is pick it up. T. So three is guan zhao ti. Pick up what? Pick up the method. Pick up the method if you lose it. Or if you kind of slowly sense the mind is kind of sliding into that drowsy state, bring it up, clarify the mind. Right? How to do it? Go back to posture. The mind is relaxed. Open the eyes like you're supposed to. Right? I said eyes slightly open. How many of you actually meditate with eyes slightly open? Good, the minority. Right. Eyes slowly supposed to be slightly open to so allow light to come in. Right. And then check that. Right. If you're really drowsy, open the eyes and look straight ahead or slightly above. This will bring the energy back up here. Yeah. The head region. Um, my teacher used to say, you know, this is in retreat setting. Right. He's very straight. He says, don't blink until tears come up. And then, guarantee you, you won't fall asleep again. <laughs> you know, if you open the eyes straight, without blinking, you, you will start tearing. Then the energy will be pulled up here. Your chi will be pulled up here. You won't fall asleep. When you fall asleep, it's chi too settled, and too relaxed, and poor posture. Right? So, you have to remedy that. Remedy that. Okay? Anyone else? You know, did any of you try that um, meditation on pain? I kind of just uh, introduced in there. How many of you tried that? Huh? Well, now leg is painful. First step, what do we do? Localize the pain. Temporarily put aside the breath or whatever method. Localize the pain. Usually, when people feel pain, they're amygdala. You know, part of the brain totally active. It's not a threat, painful, it's bad. They're going to fall asleep. I don't have feelings. It's, am I going to be able to stand up? Maybe it's a very bad for meditation. Maybe I should, I should wear a different pen. All kinds of things start stimulated. And then your stress hormone are dumped into the blood. Your body becomes tense. I'm telling you first, localize the pain. Make sure the rest of the body is actually relaxed. So you actually stop your habitual pattern mechanism of stress, okay, tense. Usually people have painful, just one area, the whole body burns up. The whole body is sort of tense. Your shoulders are up. Right? So right now, we stop it almost at the root, not the beginning, but 
painful, it becomes really painful, you can't use the method anymore of meditation on breath, localize the pain. Second, nonverbal, stick to sensation. There's so much association that we have with language. It's pain, you know, it's excruciating. You will, your body will start to burn out. Your whole body will start to tense up. So second, don't label pain. It's just changing sensations. And it's quite fascinating. Some of the changes in the scene, it's like a stab. Sometimes it's like numb. Sometimes it's kind of like ant crawling. Sometimes it's kind of just soreness, throbbing. There's all kinds of sensations. It's quite interesting. So don't label it. Just watch the predominant experience in this moment, which is at most two, three spots. That's it. The rest of the body, relaxed. Third, Localize the pain. Don't label the pain. Third, observe the change. And then you will see the change. It's actually quite fascinating. Every moment is different. Sometimes within that period of pain, your legs or ankle, it's actually a different sensation. Okay? And if you really can't stand it, straighten the leg. But you do it mindfully. Don't do it in a reactionary mode. All of our lives, we're constantly living our lives in a reactionary mode. Like this lady here, she feels uncomfortable, so she's going like this. Do you know that how many movements we usually do throughout the day that just ran seems random, but we're constantly escaping pain. We're constantly escaping this moment. We want this moment to be other than what it is. So sometimes we're scratching here, we're scratching here. Over here, 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 a little bit of pain, kind of straining legs, constantly. So meditators actually have a very strong threshold of pain because their power of mindfulness is actually stronger than the habit. So when the and this is a way to practice it. Localize the pain. Don't label the pain. Experience changing sensations. If you really can't stand it, straighten out the legs mindfully. And then watch that sensations go through changes. From uncomfortable, I mean not, not comfortable, to the pain dissolved. Now, the predominant experience, you can go back to the breath again. You see? So you can bring in all the difficulty, challenges in meditation, you turn that into opportunity to practice. You first do it in a simplified situation like meditation. Then you can do it in daily life. How many of you like counting the breath better? Raise your hands. Why do you like it better? Here we go. It's more easy to concentrate. Easy to concentrate. Use the other Time system. Okay, good. How many of you overcount? Past ten. Yeah. When it becomes systematic, like you say, sometimes it becomes mechanical. That's the caveat. So what we have to do is make sure once it exhales, then give it a number. Delay a minute. I mean, not a minute, but delay a, a little bit. Because when it becomes mechanical, like, one, two, it becomes mechanical. Three, today's lunch was pretty good. Four, <laughs> five, oh, it's almost time to go home now. <laughs> Six, seven, 11, 10, 11, 12. You just keep on going. So that's what happens when it becomes mechanic, mechanical. So you want to kind of delay a little bit. Exhale, and then count. So each number is isolated, complete within itself. Uh, we can do that. You all like that method? Don't um, belittle this simple exercise of counting. This method. Uh, this, this, this method is actually very, very powerful because it allows you to turn on the light of your mind to realize how much, what kind of furniture does it have inside. How much train of thought is actually there, which is the first step. A lot of people get discouraged. Wow, I meditate, I feel like I have more wandering thoughts. If I don't meditate, everything's fine. <laughs> that, that's like, you know, all day long, we've been living our lives and turn off the light. Everything's fine. The room is clean. It's really clean. But you're bumping into stuff and you're harming yourself, harming other.
first step is to 